My name is Yuri, I'm a software developer from Belgium. And my talk is about the combination of event sourcing and the Erlang VM. And I'll try to squeeze two explanation of why, uh, uh, I will try to demo two superpowers of this combination. So I am working for an Australian company called Miko, also active in Belgium. And some time ago, we were given a task to develop a service, an authorization service, and it has three interesting properties relevant for this talk. So first of all, the data set that, that, that um, this service is responsible for is very sensitive. And we should never forget anything that has ever happened in the system. Like, uh, and we should, should be able to implement something which I call a time machine-like functionality. That is, being able, being able to go back in time and analyze the state of the application, which was, say, like three months on Friday at 5 a.m. The data set of the application is small. It is unlikely to grow too big. It will never have many writes, and it's an internal component, not for the general public, but it will have very many reads, so it should be very read-optimized. When we talk about um, never forgetting anything, event sourcing comes to mind. And by that time, I had already had experience uh, developing event sourcing and, and secure S applications, so I proposed, okay, let's, let's, let's uh, follow the pattern called event sourcing. What is event sourcing? Event sourcing is... Um, a pattern where you capture all images to your applications as a sequence of events. So basically, every change to the state of your application is an event. Events are immutable. They are never deleted. They are never modified. This is an append list. So we decided to use their Lang VM and Elixir for this. And this is a very simplified, uh, super simplified diagram of, of an event sourcing application. So we have a command. Uh, okay, it's working. Right, so a command is an intent to, to perform some kind of a change, right? And it is validated against the state of the, of, of, of the application, and an event is published. So here is the, the event is coffee made. This event is appended to the event store. There are entities which are subscribed to events of certain types. So here you have two entities, I call them handlers, so projectors, and each one of them has a state. This state is, 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 is um, so it belongs to this projector, and the state is essentially a reduction of all the events that the handler or projector listens to. And we also have queries, which is a way to query those states. Those states can be anything. It can be mem in memory state or uh, a database table or like anything you want. So here is an example of an event. This is basically your plain old, well, not Java object, but plain old uh, Elixir struct, right? So you see that the three, the, three, three, the three fields that it has, these are not primitive types, but these are also simple structs. So essentially, this is a struct which is serializable and deserializable into JSON. And uh, since we will have a small data set, and we need to optimize the application for reading, what we can do, we can take the advantage of the Erlang platform, and we can keep some state in memory. So each event handler will be an Erlang process, aka a gen server. And the handler state is just a gen server state, a data structure or, uh, or an ETS table. ETS is a, a long term storage. And we get concurrent processing of events for free. And reading does not involve uh, the database and is thus fast. So here are these handlers. Don't know if you can see it. So um, each brick here is a handler which is subscribed to a certain uh, kind of, to a certain type of event managed by the handler supervisor. Those which end with registry have their memory have their state in memory and those which end with projector uh, have uh, managed their state as a database table. And here's an example of uh, an agent's registry. So first, it, we declare which types uh, of events it, it listens to. Thank you, Joseph, for the macros in Elixir. And uh, here is how such a registry uh, processes an event. So, it, 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 so this, is, this is a handler for an event of type agent updated. It finds an agent in, in its state, updates it, and stores it back to uh, to the state, and below you see there are some other clauses. Here is a way to query those states. So we get some request, we find the agent, or we fail to find the agent, and we send the response. 
And this is another kind of handlers, which is, which is called the projector, which is responsible for managing the projection, which is a database table. So instead of, uh, instead of uh, handling its own in-memory state, uh, it generates a SQL query, which is then executed by the framework part of the application. So this has been, oops, what have I done? Oh. Ah, yeah. Uh, so this was uh, the first superpower. We use Erlang processes to keep application state and memory for fast reads. And now it's very, uh, okay, superpower two, eventual consistency when dispatching an event. How can we, so this is an example of how we could process an incoming command. So you see there is a command, there are two handlers, and we send the response uh, only after both handlers uh, are done uh, updating the state, and that's fine. Sometimes we can do that, but we can also do this. So we can send the response uh, after we have published events, but before, we, uh, have, before those handlers have processed uh, um, uh, the event. Why can we do that? Because publishing an event is a promise that everything, that uh, the state will be updated. Or we can go some, somewhere in between. We can wait for a subset of those uh, subscribers. For, he, here, for example, we're waiting for event handler 2, and as soon as it is done processing the state, uh, we can send the response. So this is also a way to, to optimize writing. So uh, thank you very much. Write code and be happy. Thank <laughs> you.